Ah, the smell of onions oh. freshly frying are in the air. Howdy, this is Larry. And I'm Laban, I think. I'm not sure. I'm confused. Today. And welcome to Cooking Cheap. It's so wonderful to have you here, and we're glad that you should come. And for once, you came by invitation. Oh, we my goodness. Instead of just showing up, I see Harold Excuse sitting behind me. camera number three back uh -huh. there, looking very... I don't know what he's looking. He's pensive. looking pensive. That's a good one. Pensive. <laughs> looking pensive. And of course we have his snappy wife, the lovely Doris, yes. standing over here She'll who be in here eventually. told us a few minutes ago that we were keeping her up. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's just terrible. She is, well, what but we, we love her. Today? I don't know. I think that only the witch, how's that for a cue, could possibly tell us that. Well, And what see. does she say, Laban? You want to read it? Oh, sure. You know I do. Dear Big Boy and Johnson. I'll swear. <laughs> and with me trying to lose weight all the time. How about hamburger? Let's talk real cheap. Thanks, your friend, Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's Oprah McGillicuddy. She's a good friend right. of ours. Lives down the street here. It's true. Well, yeah. I'm frying up hamburger even as we speak. Well, About I've a pound of it. Fr fried up a pound and a half. What are you doing? Well, what I'm doing here, according to the old recipe on the wall, <laughs> is hamburger potato casserole. Mm. And it was sent in by Vera White of Lynchburg, Virginia. Vera, thank you very much, honey. It's an interesting recipe. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, I'm doing shepherd's pie, which is the first recipe we ever, we ever did, did on, this, on show, this show 18 years ago. Bly did it and it never was right, so I'm trying to... <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> Just listen and to I him. And I have cooked um, a pound and a half. It calls for two pounds, but it was just too much food and I cut it back. <laughs> pound and a half of hamburger and uh, drained it. And that's real important. You want to drain it. And now in the same pan, i am got a diced onion and I'm cooking it and letting it get tender, and then I'll add some more stuff to that in a few minutes. Well, my recipe from Vera doesn't really say what you're supposed to do with a pound of <laughs> and a half of hamburger. I, so we can only assume that we're supposed to fry it first, but it doesn't really say that. But I just think it would be a little unusual to take a pound of raw burger and spread it out all over top of some potatoes. So oh, the, oh, where did oh, that this, recipe come yeah, from? Yeah, mine came from Owen McGurr of Belfast, Northern Ireland. I beg your pardon. No kidding. Is that true? Well, it is. Well, read your recipe sometime, Clyde. Well, I read mine. I don't <laughs> read yours. Why would yes, I want to indeed. read yours? One of our foreign viewers, and we now have them, so thanks a lot. Yeah, well. Now, I'll, so I got a pound and a half of hamburger, and I'm frying that up right there on top of the stove. And I'm going to take about four or five, it says four big potatoes, I think it is. Four medium potatoes. Well, I have didn't have any medium, so I've just, I'm going to do five semi-medium potatoes <laughs> and I'm just gonna well you know we'll work on those right now I I'll, just didn't think I could peel a t potato today because I don't uh, feel real good with this sinus stuff so I said fooey with it and I'm using instant potatoes what can I tell you I, folks nothing. it's just it's pathetic a miracle. down here at cooking cheap <laughs> it's a miracle we can move around at all so well anyway I'm just gonna go on ahead and I didn't peel the ones that are in there. I just washed them up real good. Mm -hmm. I like potatoes with their little coats on. They're good for you. You yes, know that. Yes, they are full of... Now I'm, I'm going to add a, a chopped tomato into mine. I'm going to make a little switch in mine today, by the way. Mine calls for just a little bit of accent. And, you know, it's got MSG in it, and it would just give me a terrible headache, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to add a little something. I never yeah. knew you had that kind of... Oh, it's terrible. You remember, you remember that time we went to that Chinese restaurant and I had to lay down? <laughs> I hadn't even eaten I didn't yet. know that was from <laughs> the MSG. <laughs> I hadn't had anything to eat, but that's beside the point. Anyway, so four potatoes. Actually, yeah, I'm doing four today. I was going to do five. I've changed my mind. After I heard Johnson talk about how lazy he is today and having problems with those arthritic fingers, I figure I'll just cut back two. Mm. So anyway, I think this needs to either be covered when you bake it, or you need to add more liquids to it, because I don't think it has enough liquids in it. Right. But I think if you covered it, it probably would do okay. Now, well, it is a strange kind of recipe. Well, it is. It is indeed. I need to put a little salt and pepper. You know, I that. have a feeling that this guy that sent us 
this recipe from over in the foreign fields mm -hmm. in, in Ireland. He's called it Irish shepherd's pie, but it just looks like plain old shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie to me. Yeah. But uh, in any event, I think that he would uh, probably use lamb instead of ground beef. If it's a true recipe, you're right. You're probably right. Well, you know, washing these potatoes off a little bit here, and I'm going to slice them. All right. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to add a half a cup, no, a one cup of beef bouillon. Well, this thing certainly is taking its good old time today. Have they paid the electricity down here? Well, I, my side seems to be working very well. Well, that's just it. It's sucking off all the power from my side over here. I got to take one of these big old things and put a little Pam on it. Or you can just take some plain old Crisco and smear it on there, whatever you want to do. It just calls for a little something so it won't all stick to the bottom. And Vera is a little liquid is in this. I could certainly understand why you'd have to grease a pan. Although I love Vera and I trust her very much. At least I think I do anyway. Well, I put the greatest of plenty of pepper and a little dash of salt in mine. And now I'm going to add about a tablespoon of fresh parsley. Ooh, it does look pretty though, doesn't it? Uh-huh. And a half a teaspoon, I think it is, of thyme. And you know, I'm, I'm out of sage. So, uh, oh, you'll never be out of sage. Well, I am. So I, I'm substituting uh, garlic powder. Well, good for you. Listen to him screaming out there. Is that a little? <laughs> is that a little tip that we can use? No. Uh huh. I don't think. <laughs> All right. Now I've taken these potatoes, and what you do is you slice them real thin. If you want to do this recipe in a hurry, I would suggest that you slice these real thin, throw them in some water, and parboil them first, just to be guaranteed they're going to be done. Because by the time you assemble this, with the exception of the cheese and the soup going into it, it's virtually a, you know, all done anyway. So if you had to serve this in a hurry, you could save yourself a little time by just boiling your potatoes first before you do all this. What I'm doing is exactly what Vera told me to do. And this will be one of the few things that Vera tells me to do that I'm going to do in this recipe. Uh, we're going to have uh, the very lovely Doris come in in a little bit. She's got cream of broccoli soup today. Ooh. And uh, it was sent in by Janice Marshall Lester of New York, Delaware. And I'll bet you it sounds good. Is it a good one? Not bad. Not bad. She says it's not bad. <laughs> now that is unbridled enthusiasm it coming is. from Doris Ford. This does make quite a few potatoes, and I'm sorry for taking so long, but you know, if I didn't do this, this recipe wouldn't last a minute and a half. <laughs> I'd be in the car on my way home. So anyway, just take your time, mm. do it right. All right. Slice them thin. Now I'm putting my reserved hamburger back into the pan. What'd you say you're doing? I say I'm putting a. That funny, you know, this hamburger looks exactly like potatoes. <laughs> All right, my re reserved hamburger has gone back in the pan, <laughs> and I have to let it cook for a few minutes to warm through and get all the flavors of the vegetables and herbs through it. Johnson, you should know by now not to ever anger the director. <laughs> don't, don't be saying anything bad about it. She's like, we'll never show you again. She was doing something else, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, they make them do so much mathematical computations now back there. Well, and they have to answer the mail. And, and the phones. So they've got poor Carol working the front desk while she's directing the show, and she's running back and forth and wheezing and huffing. She's a wonderful lady, but she can only do six things at once. So anyway, there we go. Well, this stuff is finally getting to the point where I want it to get to. Frying it up real good. And while we're waiting for that to get just a little bit more done, that was really lean. It hasn't got an awful uh -huh. lot of uh, fat. I'm going to take a big old uh, green pepper. And what you do is you slice it in strips. So the first thing I'll do is de-seed it and slice it in strips. Oh, that sounds terrible. De-seed it? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So anyway, pull its little innards out and get all those seeds oh, out of there. And we'll slice it into little bitty thin strips. Just little tiny thin strips is what you're going to use for on top of it. 
this goes in there too. Now Doris is studying her recipe real hard because I think she figures she's caught me at something. No. Oh, okay. You know, it's just nerve wracking when she stands over here and pats her foot and looks at the recipe while you're doing the show because <coughs> you just never know what she's up to. I'm not doing this necessarily in the order that it comes in the recipe, but I will get my act together shortly. Well, while you're doing that, well, let's see. I guess this needs to cook, though, a little bit more. All right, I'm going to take this burger off of here. So what you do is you place the potatoes in grease casserole dish, and then you put the hamburger on top of that, like so. There we go. That goes in there like that. It's this is just a one pot dish is what it amounts to. I mean, this is you get this, you got the whole shebang. You got everything you need to eat. One simple meal, as near as I can tell. I got a hamburger all over everything. Did I get any on you, Doris? She's not even speaking to me at this point. Pound of ground beef, and then you put the uh, pepper. Oh, onions. Excuse me. Calls for two onions. I left one on the counter. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it had rolled un, under the seat of my van again. You know, we find more vegetables and stuff under there. All right, and don't make any jokes. There we go. And we're just going to slice these up real good. And that's going to be the next thing that goes on top of this. Are you betwixt and between at this well, point? Well, I'm, I'm ladling out the meat and the vegetable mixture with a slotted spoon so I can leave as much of the grease back in the pan as possible. Okay, I'm going to put some of these onions on here next. I don't think it really matters if you break them up. I, I've done them fairly thinly. And they get layered on here next. This recipe smells wonderful when you, but then what wouldn't if you've got this right. much onions in it? It ought to smell real good anyway, I would think. Now I've got to do one more, and then we'll put a layer of uh, green peppers on that. Mm, that's not looking well, so we good. The, uh, well, yeah, the Cook, cook Sisters, sisters sure, yeah. while we're cutting and steaming. Dipping. and I'm going to use only a Oh, here they come. Excuse me, I went to sleep there oh. for a bit. I thought the Cook Sisters were already in here, but they're not. They're coming no. in right now. And here they are. Hey, Tootsie. Huh? What? Well, you know, if, if, if you make a big mess in your kitchen like you usually do, and you want to keep your cookbook pages clean. Say that again. Cookbook pages. pages. Sounds like a herd of <clears throat> a hens. But if you want to keep them clean, just cover it over with plastic wrap, and then you can spatter and splash and oh, everything you and want. Have a good and time. And just peel it off at the end, and your your cookbook pages will be pristine. Oh, Maisie, I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> Sister Cook. And I'm Tootsie Cook. And, and we're, we're the, the Cook, Cook Sisters. Sisters. Alrighty, I'm putting some more of these onions in here. That's the second big old onion. That looks like a, a preponderance of onions to me, but that's what it calls for. And then what you do is you come in here with the green peppers and just place them around delicately and artistically, if you possibly can, making a very lovely and beautiful presentation for all to enjoy. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> so there's that. Now I'm putting three tablespoons of margarine into this two cups of boiling water because I'm using instant potatoes today. I just didn't think I could peel a potato. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, it just didn't look right. Between you and Doris, I'm just surprised that we've just bothered to even come by here today. Oh, well. Now, the next thing I have to do is put soup, tomato soup, on this. Holy cow. Yeah, it goes across here. And then also need to water it down a little, so I'm going to use about half of it and put about half a can of water in it because it needs, it really does need to have a little more juice in it. So, well, that certainly did a lot. <laughs> it all still came out in one big blob. Now, what you do is you put that in the oven. 
Oh, a little salt and pepper uh -huh. goes in there also. And a little accent if you love MSG, and if you don't, don't bother with it. I don't know what it's supposed to do. A little salt and a little pepper. And what you do is you put that in the oven uh, at 350 degrees for about 40, 45 minutes. And then you take it out and you put your favorite kind of cheese on it. This one called for sliced cheese. I prefer cheddar. And like Mr. Johnson, I just didn't feel like doing all that chopping and cutting and grating today. So let's pretend like this has been in the oven for 40 minutes. Can you all pretend like it's been in the oven for 40 minutes? We have a few doubters here. Uh, we have some people who are having problems do. imagining that this has been in the oven for 40, 45 minutes. But when you take it out and you put your cheese on top and then put it back in until it's nice and melted on top. And that should be about an hour's worth when it's all said and done. It's real pretty. It's one pot meal. There it is. Quite lovely. Can, okay, Mr. Johnson's just, at a critical stage. No, I'm just mixing up the potatoes. Oh. And they, you're supposed to have some milk in them, and I forgot the milk, so I <laughs> used a little leftover <laughs> beef stock, and that'll goose it up flavor-wise. Oh, That's what. Let's. I'll yeah. do the recipes for what we do. All right. All right. Mine is a hamburger potato casserole sent in by Vera White of Lynchburg, Virginia. Vera, 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 Vera. Four medium potatoes sliced thin, two large onions sliced thin, a pound of ground beef, and we assume that you are supposed to, to, to fry it first. A green pepper sliced in thin strips, a can of tomato soup diluted with a half can of water, salt and pepper to taste, teaspoon of accent, your choice if you want to, and your choice of cheese, whatever kind of cheese you like for on top of it. She calls for sliced cheese, which probably could be about anything you'd want it to be anyway. Mm -hmm. Could be American, could be all oh, just a million one things. All right, now you're gonna you break doors. You want? I, well, let me start doing this. I'm I'm gonna put the potatoes on top of the meat mixture. So, all right, just bring her in. Doris, come on in here while he's playing with the potatoes. How you been? I'm, oh, I'm doing fine. Well, good. I'm doing just good. fine. How's Harold? Harold, he's looked like he's doing fine. You doing yeah, fine, Harold? Does, yeah. Come Harold in. Come in and say hello. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we've been taking. No, I thought he would. We, we're taking advantage of the few nice days. He wanted to know why he didn't want to come. It's raining again. It's just miserable this. here. Oh, I would think that you would want to get out of the house on a rainy <laughs> day really. like today. <laughs> but um, I had to make broccoli soup, and um, I made. It's it's canned. But it tastes pretty good. Um, you have to use. No, wait a uh, minute. If it's canned, how can you <laughs> it's be making not, it? It's, it's got some fresh stuff in it. Oh, okay. Oh. But, <laughs> but is this one of those that starts with canned soup? I'm afraid so. I'm always suspicious of homemade soup. But, that but you with use a, soup. An, an onion. You can uh, take a chopped up onion and you saute it and then you, uh, in oil, and then you add a can of potato soup, a can of celery soup, and two and a half cups of water, and one cup of cooked chopped broccoli and uh, four ounces of cheese. And uh, it, we, we tried it earlier, and it, it turns out to be a pretty, pretty nice little soup. And um, Looks thick and delicious. Right, and for something real quick, uh, somebody could turn this out real quick, and uh, I've discovered something with my bread machine. <laughs> it's got a thing on it where, that you can um, um, if you tell me you made that soup in your bread <laughs> no, machine, no. But I put, you. I put, uh, I found out it, it's got this little setting on there that you can put regular stuff in it, and just let it rise, oh. and then you take like it out, this? and then you can make your own biscuits in in the mm. oven. So this way, I have, I made some rolls to have with the soup, and I think that. Are these from scratch? Yeah, and, and you, in your in your bread machine, there's a little setting that does all the kneading for you and the rising and. Then you just take it out and roll them up and form put them it, in the and form put them, it in a put regular them in the oven. Up. So they're but you have to put it in a regular mm -hmm. oven. Okay. But they okay. do the hard work for you. Well, isn't that amazing? And so and you can make a very nice little meal real quick. Well, that's neat. Hmm. Okay. Well, I suppose much, so. If you say well, so. Well, even still cutting. So how much more time do you have to kill? <laughs> <laughs> However much you so want. How much was that? You got some more stuff if you want. To, no, well, to let's say. see. No, not really. Good. <laughs> All right, get out of town. But this is nice. This is nice. All right, uh, I'll take the bread over to the table. Back to Mr. Johnson. Oh, thank you. Well, I've just diced up a little uh, margarine, it is, actually, and put it on top of this. And you're going to bake it for 35 minutes at 375. And uh, when that's accomplished, you're all finished. And it comes out looking like 
this. Have you given your recipe? Oh, no, I haven't. Let me do that right now. This is the Irish Shepherd's Pie, two pounds of ground beef, tablespoon of oil, two onions finely chopped, two tomatoes chopped, one cup of beef stock or bouillon, one half teaspoon of sage, a quarter teaspoon of, I'm sorry, of thyme and a quarter teaspoon of sage, tablespoon of chopped parsley, salt and pepper, and mashed potatoes in the amount of about five potatoes, and then a little margarine to put on top. So that's the Irish shepherd's pie, and it looks real pretty, and I guess we'll go find out. That, ooh, look at that. Well, I just got this out of the oven, and this is what it looks like when it bakes all up real nice. It's still bubbling around in there. I used uh, some nice cheddar cheese on top, but isn't that pretty? It's a real pretty dish. It's it really gorgeous. is. It's just lovely. If I had a little more time, I'd take a picture of it personally. But I'm going to take it over here now so oh, Mr. Johnson just... and I can have a, a bite to eat. But first, you know, I have to do something else that's just terribly, terribly important. I have to put this one in the oven for the staff to eat <laughs> for tomorrow. <laughs> That's one hour from night right now, Miss Carol. Please start your timer. That's one hour oh. from right now. Oh. So anyway, now we can go over here. Should I put yours in also? Yes. Be How all long right. does it bake? 30 or 40 minutes. 30 or 40 minutes for right now, Miss Carol. You will get this out for tomorrow's staff lunch. <laughs> well, we've got the staff all set up now, don't we? Licking their chops. Well, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Did you do this with, with instant potatoes also? Uh -huh. Well, look at that. It just set up real nice. And let me get you a big old thing. Yikes. Oops. You all right? Yeah. Just burn of my this. hand. I'll be marked forever. Well, you know, that has formed right nicely. Yes. I must say, Vera, I'm impressed with your recipe. I was a doubting Larry there for a couple of minutes. <laughs> All right, so that goes well, over these here. These are the sweet little rolls. Well, we just have sweet rolls. Well, isn't that you where want she some, got them? You want some butter? Mm. I know she got them I in, know the, you're not in the watching. frozen food section. Uh-oh, no, way. Uh -oh, no way. She gets right huffy about it, I tell you. I put a little butter on. Well, I'm going to try your sheep herder's pie. <laughs> you know, I'm an old sheep herder from way back uh -huh. myself. You know, we used to raise sheep. Did I ever tell you yes, that? Yes, you did. And you told me some things that we can't even relate <laughs> on the air. About, well, yeah, we had some problems. They'd get sick and what have you. Oh, I see. Mmm. Oh, Mr. Johnson. Mmm. I really like that. That is really terrific. Well, let me try. Yours is good, too. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. mm. Wow. And? Oh. It's, I said yours is really good. Oh, but I mean, what do you think of your own? I think it's real good. Try and follow along, it. Mr. Johnson. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to do. No, it tastes really good. Well, this. Now I got to try this soup. Potato thing is, is right good, if I must say. So I think I'd like it a little snappier. I believe I'd use either a, a real sharp cheddar on top of it. I use cheddar, but not sharp. Or and I would throw a little more accent in there. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my recipe might be a little different if you did it the full, you know, if you did the full thing. Mm -hmm. But the, with two pounds of ground meat and all those mashed potatoes, that would serve easily eight people. Well, I think you're right. So we don't have that many people in our family here, so I thought it was foolish to make it if we couldn't eat it. Well, you're right, although the staff probably could have used, mm -hmm. it, used it. Uh, the soup uh, is real good. Your bread is fabulous, if I must say so. Mm. Well, that's well, a pretty good soup. awfully good recipes. Well, once again, another week has come and gone, and we've managed to pull together some pretty nice stuff. I'm sur just sort of surprised that this has formed so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so easy to handle. I thought it would just like you know, completely all fall to pieces, but it really doesn't. Although I do think that soup is still sitting precariously on top there. I believe you know, it would do well to maybe mix that a little more maybe. and pour it in. You know, uh, both of these dishes would be perfect to take to a buffet, you, mm -hmm. know, you know, or a covered dish dinner. You're absolutely right about that. 
And it's a good thing because I'm going to a covered dish dinner. I really am at 530. Today. Mm -hmm. Today. And I intend to take what remains of that. Well, that's <laughs> uh -huh. wonderful. And I hope that nobody notices that several bites have been taken out of it. I'm going home to bed. Are you really? Mm-hmm. I've had it. I'm tired. Well, for heaven's sake, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just feel grateful that between Doris and Laban that we were just able to stay awake for 27 and a half minutes. You know, if we had an outside camera and could show how nasty it <laughs> it's is terrible. It's terrible. Y'all come back again. Real soon. Real soon, if not sooner. Or perhaps even sooner than that, if you possibly can arrange it. Bye. Mm -hmm.